very much for the beautiful conference. And today we will uh, talk about the provenance and diffusion of white marbles in the area of Roman trace. It's my PhD project at the University of Salzburg, but uh, it's a working ongoing project also at the Austrian Archaeological Institute in Vienna. A few words about the marble and its properties. Uh, marble, it's a metamorphic carbonate rock. We have two types, the calcitic and the dolomitic, and we have different corrosions due to, temp to temperature, humidity, radiation, rainwater, and many other factors, and some very strange uh, physical properties that we will not go in today. Uh, the main question is why? Why do we care about where it's, the marble is coming from? What is uh, what are the information that we get. So first of all, we answer questions about the connection between the cities in terms of religion, economy, and any other type of relations. A uh, second main question is about the ancient trade and the land and the sea routes, and in some cases, the river routes. Secondary questions that we can answer is the way of transferring the material, the exchange of the products, the exchange of technicians and art. And then we can move on to some practical problems such as conservation and restoration. And the main, main critical issue in museums the last decades, the authenticity of marble. We cannot date marble. Uh, however, knowing where the source of marble is coming from, we can get some information if this is an authentic or not. Of course, this cannot be uh, done if we don't have a very good combination of techniques and scientists such as archaeologists, physicists, geologists, and archaeometrists. Um, I would like to show you here a map of the most important ancient quarries um, in Mediterranean. We can start with um, A, G, and C, and we have um, Thassos, Paros, and Naxos. We can continue with Pentelicon and Hemidos in Attica. Of course, Asia Minor was, was a main production uh, center of marble, starting with Proconesos, one of the most famous ones, continuing with Aphasian, Aphrodisian, and Miletus uh, quarries, and then going also to Italy in Carrara. And uh, also in Austria, we have Kuman, Spitzelhof, and Pohoria. How do we do this? Uh, marble is a very homogeneous material, so we need more than one technique to be able to have some uh, secure results about the provenance. So first of all, we have an unknown sample, and then we have a database for comparison. We perform um, the set of the techniques, such as petrography, when we have a big enough sample, isotope analysis of oxygen and carbon, EPR analysis, tra trace element analysis with ICPMS technique and atomic absorption spectroscopy, and then the fluid analysis with crust leads um, with the method of ion chromatography. When we have all this data finished, we perform statistical treatment and then we get the provenance. It's important here to say that there are other techniques also used for this field, such as cathodoluminescence and neutron activation analysis, but it's depending on each group, which techniques uh, is willing to use. Still, I really have to underline that one technique is not enough. We need to have two, three, or as many as provided. The problem that we are facing is that there is no destruction-free methods uh, till nowadays about this field. So we need to get a sample. We are avoiding the drills because they leave a big hole uh, at the artifact. So we prefer a hammer and a chisel to get a small fling uh, behind the object or in a broken surfaces, definitely not to um, change the style and the archeological value of the artifact. Uh, the problem is that sometimes the samples are very small and that means that we cannot perform all the set of the techniques that I mentioned, or uh, sometimes the surface is so weathered that we analyze the actual weathering and not the clean material, or um, we have to clean it chemically, so it's not the best solution for our analysis in the end. Uh, and important as well is the database. In our group um, with the professor Walter Prohaska, we have 4,500 quarry samples from all over the ancient world, Asia Minor, Greece, Italy, Bulgaria, and many other places to be able to compare the unknown samples with this, um, with this set. And 
in our group also we have 4,500 samples of different objects from ancient sites and museums. Um, and it could be any type of artifact like sarcophagi and inscriptions, etc. Today we will talk and focus about the marble studies in Trace and two case studies, the Villa Armira and Kasnakovo. Again, the map. If you noticed before, we have really no idea what's happening in the area of uh, Trace and modern Bulgaria. Uh, so how the story began, uh, of course, marble was a way to, um, to sew off, uh, let's say it uh, very, uh, very easily, a high prestige value and an expression of political ties in Roman period. What is happening in Trace during that time is that we have a, a big urbanization and monumentalization of the cities or creating cities from zero. That meant that they needed material to start building uh, public buildings, private buildings, and the use of white marble, as we said, it was very important for them. So they searched for new sources uh, around the cities to limit the costs uh, and expanding the old quarries wherever was possible. Um, so unfortunately, we don't have, as you saw on the map, many information about this. We have a general list of ancient quarries from Petrova and Ivan from 2009, but there is a description of the place, not the analysis of them. Uh, and we have some individual uh, studies and colleagues working on the marbles and such as sculptures and the unfinished objects and workmen and trade. But again, nothing complete, nothing um, to, to fill the whole pulse, puzzle. Some research questions that we are focusing is how the demand of the marble was covered in trays. Did they use local quarries or did they import marble from sub-regional quarries? Uh, then we move to the next group of questions. For example, what is the use of the marble? Did they use different uh, marble for architecture, different marble for sarcophagi, different marble for uh, sculptures? And what are those criteria for these uh, choices? And then some more practical questions, the characteristic of each marble quarry, the physical chemical properties, and then the fingering, the fingerprinting of this um, locations and again if they were a specific use for specific marbles. To be able to answer these uh, questions we created some hypotheses based on the economic and historical component of the Roman imperial period first to third century AD, the quality and the material condition, the export power of Asia Minor and also the workshops and the style and the art of Asia Minor and the influence on the provisions along the lower Danube. And to be able to answer the questions and the hypothesis, we need to sample archeological elements, inscriptions, sculptures, and quarries. Um, here I would like to show you the map of the Bulgarian quarries and the provinces, uh, the province of Trace. Uh, with the green color, the green uh, squares, you see the um, analysis and the research that it has been done from 2018 to 20. Uh, in southeastern Bulgaria, we are talking about 20, 25 locations of marble quarries and outcrops. Here I would like to show you some of these uh, quarries, some photos. Uh, we are talking about larger areas and smaller areas. However, it's very lucky to find any ancient tool mark because these quarries were, were in use till 50s, 60s, some till nowadays. So possible, unfortunately, traces, ancient traces are gone. Uh, I would like here to show you the most important quarry that we have from this area, which is called Kamilski Dol. It's covering a large area with different pits with debris could be ancient, but definitely modern. And the only information that we have that this was an actual ancient quarry is that in the middle of one of these pits, there was an unfinished block, marble block with ancient tool marks. So there is an indication about ancient use and this block now is uh, exhibited in a local museum there. Very briefly to go through petrography, just to show you the, differentiations of the marble and that in this such a small area we have all the types of marble starting with the top photo uh, large um, grain size with uh, smaller uh, 
um, grains in between, continuing to the medium uh, size in the middle and to the very, very fine grain uh, at the end. The isotope diagram looks like this. It seems scary. However, it's very, we have two clear groups with um, heavy carbon and lighter carbon. It is very interesting that this carbon, this plus seven carbon is not existing in other quarries that we know so far. So when we get an artifact with similar numbers, we can assume more or less immediately that we have, um, we have a match. And then you see the light blue color. These are the very fine grain um, samples. So depending of the actual artifact, we can add or exclude some groups. And uh, for the final uh, examination and the statistical treatment, some groups can be joined together, such as Kamilski doll one and three, they're from similar locations, or for example, the two and one A Kamilski doll. And here is the multivariate diagrams uh, when we perform all the analysis that I mentioned before, and we plot all the valuables that we have, such as manganese, magnesium, iron, strontium, uh, all the isotopes and the ratios from the ion chromatography. And you can see that we have a very clear discrimination. So it's not as scary as before. Uh, here is the location of the two archaeological sites that we are going to talk today. It's the Villa Armira, as I said, and Kasnakovo. The Villa Armira, it's a beautiful, all made of white marble villa dated in the first century, abandoned in the fourth century AD. Uh, there are two hypotheses about this villa, according to the archaeologists, that first of all, the owners of the villa are also, are also the owners of the marble quarries that they are located two kilometers behind this villa in the valley. So that's why they became rich and that's why they were able to build this elaborate building. The second hypothesis is based on the style of the, of the actual architecture of the villa, that it is believed to have connections with the Aphrodisian quarries in Asia Minor. And the question was, was the only the art transfer there or also the raw material to be able to build this villa? Um, we sampled about 60 pieces from architecture and these uh, sculptures that you see in the photo. Um, from the beginning, even if macroscopically it looked like Aphrodisian, when we perform the petrography, we see that it doesn't look like this. However, it is similar, there are similarities with Kamilski doll that we saw, the local source that we saw earlier. And so here we see the Herman and the balustrade, they are coming from local uh, mat uh, material, uh, Armira, two kilometers behind the Kamilski doll, and then uh, Armira and uh, Kamilski doll as well, the beautiful pilaster capitals, very famous in Bulgaria uh, of the architecture. The mosaics, however, we have, sorry, very fast. We have um, very beautiful mosaics that they are coming all from fine grain size. And that means that it's coming not from Amira that we will assume, but from Pordivica, 40 kilometers away. We want to go back and sample more mosaics to be able to see if there was a production center or not. Very quickly, moving to the Kaznakovo, we have less samples. We have about 30 samples. The limestone architecture of these uh, buildings is coming from uh, a source next to uh, the um, next to this uh, site. Uh, however, the marble, what is interesting here is the marble sculptures that we have Dolomitic marble and it's coming from Thassos, not from local sources. Uh, you see here the diagram and the two uh, sculptures and then the uh, another set of marble sculptures, the statue of Isis, a leg fragment and a sandal food, they're all coming from uh, Pentelli in Attica. So again, nothing local, only imported and quite far imported. Um, why the opposite is the architecture. Unfortunately, we don't have many white marble architecture elements. We have an iconic capital, a table and a basin, and they are all coming from local sources. As we said, Kaminsky doll, Armira and Tiadovici. Uh, in conclusion, I would just like to mention that uh, we cannot have a big conclusion about this, so only some pre uh, preliminary um, uh, results that 
we see so far that the sculptures are coming from outside the province. We see the architecture is coming from local sources. And we see that the mosaics were using um, fine grain marble. So within the next three years, we got a big project uh, from the Austrian Foundation um, uh, of research and we are planning to go back to Bulgaria to sample all these targets that you see here, the big cities, public buildings, um, private buildings, and the areas with the larger, um, uh, the larger circles uh, that they are quarries and uh, outcrops. And we would really like to see what's the whole picture of this um, trade and this marble business. Here is some suggested bibliography. It's all available in Academia and ResearchGate, but if you need some more information, please feel free to ask me. Thank you very much.